Hi everybody, welcome. Welcome, welcome to A Moment with the Ladies. So happy, as I often say, that you are on today um, with A Moment with the Ladies today. Make sure that you tag someone, let them know that A Moment with the Ladies is on today, on this wonderful Tuesday afternoon. I am Nidra Hawkins. I am married to my amazing husband, Pastor John Hawkins. We're the pastors of the Living Water Church, and we're so happy that you joined us today. If you happen to be on YouTube, welcome. So happy that you're on YouTube today. Make sure that you like the channel and or subscribe to the channel as well. Um, and then also, if you're on Facebook, love you, welcome. So happy to have you on today. A moment with the ladies. Make sure that you tag a lady. Maybe you need to tag your mother, your aunt, your cousin, your best friend, your co-worker, somebody. Let them know that a moment with the ladies is on today. Also, don't forget to like it, ladies. Make sure that you love it. Make sure that you share it and get the word out that A Moment with the Ladies is on today. And today, um, we are continuing on our teaching on how we are discovering our purpose and our power and unwrapping, if you will, our female identity based on the word of God. Um, and I'm excited about this journey. I am very grateful for what God is revealing to us um, when it comes to our female identity and our purpose here on earth and why we're here on earth. So. If you want to get some tea, um, get some coffee, whatever you need to do to uh, get comfortable in this moment, make sure that you get a notebook um, and make sure that you have your Bible, as we often refer to as your tool. Very important because we know that in this class we're discovering that your tool is your manual of who you are as a woman. This is our identity. This is our definition as who we are as women. So it's very, very important that you have your Bible as you go along. Um, in this class. Also, um, again, as you're popping on, just make sure that you love it. Make sure that you like it. Get the word out um, that A Moment with the Ladies is on today. Thank you, Mommy, for sharing. As you're popping on today, let me know where you're watching from um, and you are where you're connected from, what city, what town, what country you are connected from so that I can properly greet you as I do um, happen to catch it on today. Just a quick little, um, you know, every now and then I let you into Nidra's world, if you will. Um, and I've been sharing with you journals or tea. Good afternoon, Miss Michelle. Love you so much. Um, different things that, that are in Nidra's world. So this week, um, I did this a, a while ago and I actually picked it, picked it back up, which is my gratitude journal. Um, I received this beautiful journal for my birthday um, and I just recently started um, putting down at least five things that I'm grateful for. I used to do it a long time ago. I stopped, but I felt yesterday to pick it back up. So that's what I've been doing. It's my gratitude journal where I just write down five to seven t things. Sometimes it's more um, than that, um, but I just write down things, anything that I'm grateful for. And I am endeavoring to do this every day um, as a part of my devotion. And I, again, I used to do it, but I'm back up again. Nice little journal, very colorful. So this is another aspect into Nidra's world I just wanted to share um, with my ladies. It's very, very important um, that we are grateful for so many things and sometimes we have to be intentional um, and be mindful of what we're grateful for. And I notice when I'm writing those things down, like things, your perspective start, starts to change throughout your day. Um, this overwhelming sense of gratitude comes over you. Um, and I know that the Bible says that in everything we're to give thanks. So literally everything whether it's my husband, you all, our parents, um, life, anything, our home, all these different things. Just so grateful for what God is doing. So if you're looking to say, well, what can I do, you know, as a part of my daily routine, this is something that you um, can definitely incorporate. Hi, Ashley. Love you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So happy that you're on today. Miss Irania, love you. So happy to see you on today. So let's get right into this today. We're picking back up on um, what we were talking about last week when we were talking about who we are as women, understanding our purpose as women, understanding our identity as women. And what I think is so interesting about all of this, and I love it, is that some of you have either A, commented, or B, you text me, or C, you have spoken with me in person. And I just recently had a conversation with what, um, someone on Sunday after service about this message, about the fight is over, that they no longer have to hold on to who they were in the past as a woman, but learning how to relinquish those rights as a, what we think is a rights, rights. Hi, Ikea, love you so much. And you know, I, I, I'm glad, I'm so grateful because I feel like many of us are being confronted when it comes to our female identity, whether it's from the past 
whether it's our own thought process, whether it's society, whatever it is, has influenced us as women. These classes and the word of God by the power of the Holy Ghost is really challenging us to really step up to who God has called us to be as women. And as I ended on last, the last time we were together, I was sharing with you all that many times, and we can see that in Genesis with Satan and Eve, how when you take your position as a woman and what God has called you to be as a helpmate, as someone who offers solutions, as someone who's supposed to be soft and mild and nurturing and loving and all of those wonderful attributes that a woman is based on the word of God, based on definition, many times it's challenged. Many times in society it's challenged. And we see how Eve in the book of Genesis, she was in her position. She was playing her role. She was being the help meet. She was in the garden. Everything was good. And then Satan comes and deceives her with something opposite of what God intended. So I'm grateful because I know that all of you that are on here today, you're connected. You love Jesus. You're, you're wanting to obey him. You're discovering who you are more and more in your walk with Christ. And because you are new in Christ, because you are a new creation in Christ, that literally means that all of the thought patterns, all the ways that you used to do things, handle life, handle situations, handle relationships, handle your family, handle your finances even, and the list goes on and on, all of that's changing because you're now discovering who you are, your real power, your real purpose as a woman. You know, when we um, go through this course, we discover and we learn that a lot of women are abused. They're abused sexually, they're abused mentally, they're abused physically because a lot of times, both male and female in society and families as a whole, when you don't know how something functions, when you don't understand the intent of something, it's going to be mishandled. It's going to be misused. But thank God you're coming to this place of understanding your purpose, understanding your role, understanding your responsibility, ladies, which is so big, as a woman that God placed you in the earth. He didn't just, and I'm just recapping um, a few of these, these thoughts so that we can um, pick up, but he didn't just put you here in this earth just to exist as a woman. He didn't just make you with female body parts and say, okay, go have babies, even though that's a part of it, but that's not the totality of why you were put on the earth. God has a very distinct purpose for you. We can see that in Genesis 1 27 and 1 28, that when he created you, he made you with a purpose to multiply, to dominate, to have dominion, to have rulership, to have authority, to take territory. This is what you are called to do as a woman. And we can also see further um, in Genesis. And again, we're talking about in the beginning, as you're discovering who you are in Christ, who you are as a new creation, that God created a help meet. He saw that Adam was here on the earth. He had given him a responsibility and he realized that Adam could not do it alone. So he created a help me to help him to dominate, to help him take authority, to help him rule and all of those different things, all of all under the governance and the authority of Jesus Christ, all under the authority of God himself. So when we come back to this place of understanding who we are in God, who we are in Christ, which is our ultimate endeavor, then we begin to say, OK, this is who I am as a woman. Let me embrace it and let not anybody take it away from me. And then, of course, we went over different women in the Bible. We talked about Jezebel. We talked about Esther, Sarah, different ones, just to give you an idea of who we need to look to in the Bible. Because, again, there is a reason why every woman in the Bible is named. Whether she is has a name like Noah's wife, she may not we don't may not know her name, but we know what role and responsibility she played in the word of God. So we look to them as examples. We look to the attributes. We look to the characteristics. The Proverbs 31 woman is there for a reason. The mother sat him down and said, this is the kind of woman you need to look out for. This is the kind of woman you need to marry, not the woman who actually tears kings down. Not that kind of woman. But this is the kind of woman that you need to look for and marry. And so these kind of women, ladies, are the women that God is saying, this is how I've designed you. This is how I've created you. This is how I purposed, purposed you. And you need to learn from these examples so that you can pattern your life after them. And ultimately, when you study the, the lives of these women and the women, especially the good, good quality women, 
Their lives are patterned after the life of Jesus Christ. They were selfless. They gave to the needy. They loved. They worked hard. They had a destiny that they reached. They had plans in place. You really have to study the word of God to see that they had plans in place to ensure that what God put them on the earth to do, it, it, came, it became fulfilled. And I know that those that are under the sound of my voice, you are going to fulfill everything that God is telling you and calling you to do. You are made for something big. You are made for something great. No longer will you allow the lies of Satan or the thoughts that may come in your head to stop you from moving forward in life. Society may try to tell you, don't take your place as a Bible-based woman, but you're going to say, no, I'm receiving my authority conferred upon me by God and what he's called me to do. And I'm going to take my position in my family, in my workplace, with my children, amongst my friends. And you are going to do something great in the name of Jesus. I'm just going to read some comments here. And if you agree with that, say amen. Miss Mary is on here saying amen. This is a powerful word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, and that she is connected. Uh, Mommy saying amen. Ashley is saying yes, ma'am. Um, uh, Patty Rivera saying yes welcome welcome so glad that you're on here Ikea is saying yes ma'am and again as you're popping on today make sure that you like it make sure that you love it share it get the word out that a moment with the ladies is on today Trinice is saying amen Miss Irania is saying amen that's right this is your story all of the things in the past all of the things that we used to do in the past how we saw life it is all over now one thing that I want to talk about is what the purpose of the body is for as a woman. We're, now we're gonna get into some, some details when it comes to the purpose of a woman. We talked about how God created us, but one thing that I'm gonna be talking about today, and based on my time, hopefully I'll be able to get in everything, I may or may not. But when you think about society as a whole, right? When you think about society as a whole, a lot of times women are used as sex objects, whether it's sex slavery, prostitution, um, whether we feel like we have to dress a certain way, um, do things a certain way in order to attract attention, um, you know, comparing ourselves to other people. Um, there's people that may have come out of strip clubs. They felt like that was their way of getting money. And again, when people don't understand the beauty of the female body, the purpose of the female body, how it was supposed to be saved for the marriage bed, protected for just her husband alone, it's going to be misused and abused and mistreated. But I thank God that number one, we have been forgiven from all of our past mistakes. Number two, you're discovering your identity in Christ so you're not going back to that old behavior anymore. And number three, you're embracing the beauty that God has put on the inside of you and you're gonna use it for good and not for evil. Turn with me, if you will, to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 19. 1 Corinthians 6, Verse number 19. And if you're driving, go back and watch it. Just listen to it so that you can stay connected um, and, and really get the word of God in you. But 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 19. The Bible says, run from, I'm going to start at 18, run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Number 19, number 19, listen to this. It says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Now, I've read this scripture many times before, and, and I, I, I thank God for the word of God. But when I read this, I'm thinking to myself, wow, God made my body. Wow. For the Holy Spirit to dwell in. That my body is not just put on the earth as a female for sexual pleasure or for sexual use in the marriage in the in the realms of the marriage bed but the holy spirit lives on the inside of me that god thought of us ladies so much so that he said i'm going to design their bodies to be pure and holy that the holy spirit can now live on the inside of them that is so powerful so when you go about your day when you're getting dressed when you're walking around doing certain things and it's not only what you're dressing, but maybe the things that um, you, 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 you think about your body, how you see yourself. The Bible is letting us know, it says, don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. We're talking about 
the purpose of females. We're talking about our female identity, and today we're discussing the female body, and I'm talking about all angles when it comes to the female body. The Bible says, you do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. Wow, that is so powerful, and think about that. Think about that. When we talk about how, remember, when you're taking your position as a woman of God, as you're taking your position of understanding your purpose and the power that God has created you, the Bible is clearly, clearly letting us know. So you must honor God with your body. But look what's happening in society. There are a lot of people in society that don't know that their bodies are supposed to be honoring the Lord. In fact, we're seeing the exact opposite. In many cases, we're seeing the exact opposite of bodies being used and abused. And I'm not talking about, and it's, and it's all forms, uh, uh, sex trafficking and uh, prostitution and, and sex slavery and all those things. That is a misuse and abuse of what God has in, in intended for the body to be used for. When it comes to what we put on and all of those different things, there is a purpose for the body and Think about this even further. Our bodies are for kingdom service. Romans 12 1 says that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. So we can't just go anywhere as a woman of God. We can just say anything out of our mouth, ladies, that we want to. Again, we're talking about the purpose and power of a woman understanding our female identity, that our body is not to just be thrown around anywhere you know our body is for kingdom service that when God tells you to go you go when God tells you to go to a country you go to that country when he tells you to use these hands and these arms to embrace someone and give them a hug that's the purpose of the female body when the body is is allowing you to produce children and again I'm talking about who you are in Christ right now I'm not dealing with what you did in the past, that's over. We're not even talking about that. It's covered under the blood. You ask the Lord to forgive you. That's, your, it, that's over. I'm now talking about as a new creation in Jesus Christ, the body for sexual purity, that you keep yourselves for those who are desiring to get married again, that you keep yourselves for your husband, that you adorn yourselves with such beauty when it comes to being modest, Still being beautiful, still being attractive, still doing what you do in your own creativity, but recognizing that you're honoring your body with the Lord. That you can't just say and do and act any kind of way because you're no longer your own. As we just read, you were bought with a high price. That you are to honor your body with, it says, so you must honor God with your body that the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of you. So I know my husband said this a long time ago, and I think it's so powerful. And I've, I've said this before when I taught in different membership classes. If you are doing something that you know that the Holy Spirit would not be pleasing to see or would be dishonoring to him, or you're saying something or thinking something that would be dishonoring to him while he's living in the inside of you, those things need to change. And this is all about being who we are as, as women of God. All of this encompassing is not just always outwardly in terms of how we carry ourselves, even though that's a part of it. We're supposed to walk tall, stand tall, have beautiful smiles on our faces, dress well, have good hygiene. All of that is a part of it. But I'm talking about right, right now this inner beauty, this inward beauty that we're dealing with. We're talking about our bodies being used for the glory of God. And I know many of you, you want to use your bodies for kingdom service. You want to produce even more beautiful children, or maybe some of you already have grown children, and now you just want to tend lovingly and care for and nurture and be affectionate towards your grandchildren or those that are around you, your neighbors, whatever it is. Your body is intended for something good and not for evil, and don't allow Satan to trick you to think that you have to put on the tightest, the shortest, the, 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 the most cleavage showing in order for your body to be used in the wrong reason. That's a misconception and it is a lie from Satan to demean the value of a woman. And I pray that by God's grace, your eyes are going to be open to this and that you're going to see the beauty of who you are, that when you look in the mirror, you're not going to put yourself down. 
You're not going to belittle yourself. You're going to tell yourself you're beautiful. You're going to tell yourself I am made in the image of God. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me. That God thought of me enough. That he values me enough. That he created me so that the Holy Spirit can dwell on the inside of me. That is something to shout about. That is something to be so happy about. That God loves you so much, ladies. That he thought he, thought he took that much time to think about, let me create something. Let me create a human being that I can place the Holy Spirit on the inside of. That's so powerful. If you know that's powerful and you know that you say that's me, I accept, raise your hand something, let me know that you are connected. Miss Karen is saying hallelujah. Mommy is saying teach us Pastor Nidra. Cheyenne, I, I saw you said hi Cheyenne, love you so much. She's saying hallelujah. Joy is saying my body belongs to God. That makes me feel so loved. Thank you, God, for being a good father. He is joy. He is an amazing, ah, he's an amazing father. He's such a good father. Joy is saying, that's me. Miss Mary is saying, amen. Miss Smith is saying, yes, amen. Ikea is saying, that's me. Mommy is saying, I accept. Miss Karen is saying, that's me. I accept. That's right. Cheyenne is saying, that's me. That's powerful. It is. That is who we are as women. Now, I want you to turn with me. We are in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6. Turn over with me to 1 uh, Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. We're talking about the human body or the female body rather and we're talking about what its purpose is for and how in many cases it has been very misused, very abused but when you understand the purpose of why God created your body everything will become different in your life and you'll carry yourself differently and you'll recognize that uh-uh my body is not for this. My mouth is not for this. My hands are not for this. My feet are not to go in this particular place or that particular place, but I am using my body for kingdom service. First Peter chapter three, and I'm going to start at verse number three. The Bible says, don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within. The unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. The Bible goes on to say in verse number five, this is how the holy women of old made themselves beautiful. They put their trust in God and accepted the authority of their husbands. For instance, Sarah obeyed her husband Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters when you do what is right without fear of what your husbands might do. Now, the, the, all of this, this whole entire chapter three is so powerful, so, so good and so amazing. And if you've been connected to the Living Water Church for a few years for the women's conference, I actually use this as my foundation scripture because it is so powerful. But what I want you to see today is don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry or beautiful clothes. Now, I've heard this scripture many times and I actually took time to study it out. And what I discovered during this time when Paul did this writing, he was actually writing to the church in Asia who had just been converted. So he's actually talking to Asian women. And when I when I figured this out, what I what I come to discover is that the Asian women during this time literally took hours upon hours just to get ready. And when they came to church, they were either eight late for their meeting in church or they didn't show up because they were spending so much time getting ready. They were focused and, they, and during that time, the, that country, they were very rich. So they had a lot of elaborate jewelry, a lot of elaborate clothing. They just got converted to Christianity. It's time to go to church. And now they're taking three to four hours at least when you study this out just to get ready to come to the, to, to the house of God. So as a result, they ended again, ended up being late or no shows because they were focusing solely on their outward appearance. Now, again, every time I reference this scripture, I always want to reiterate there is nothing wrong with having nice clothes, being beautiful, making yourself pretty as a woman. That is your responsibility as a woman. You should go for it. You should do it. You should not leave the house looking bummy. And I'm going to say that and I'll leave that right there. There's nothing wrong with that. However, what the word of God is emphasizing is that our bodies, our spirits, which we're going to talk a little bit about tomorrow for the sake of time, but our spirits is what we need to focus on. That those women that he was correcting should not have spent five to six hours or however long it was for them to elaborate themselves and adorn themselves so much so that they, for, they didn't get to church. 
they didn't get to the synagogue or whatever church that it was back in that day during uh, Paul's time. They missed church because they were focusing so much on getting ready. They had such an emphasis on making sure where they saying, don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, extensive jewelry, beautiful clothes. That's what their focus was. Their focus at that time, and that's why Paul had to bring correction, because they weren't focused on being to church on time. They weren't focused on making sure that they got there in enough time to be there from beginning to end, praise and worship the word of God and fellowship at the end. They were so focused on, on these outward things, and you see that in society all the time, where there's a lot of outward things, a lot of exterior things. But when you study this as a woman of God, and even as you see this in 1 Peter chapter 3, he said, don't focus on those things, but rather focus on this inner beauty, this inward beauty that comes from having a meek and quiet spirit, which we talked about that last week. And I know we're going to be talking about it more as we journey on in this book. And remember, when we focus on cultivating our spirit, our number one responsibility, as we learn, is, our, is cultivating our relationship with Jesus Christ. That our number one focus needs to be our relationship with God and who he's called us to be. And when you do that, ladies, as Jesus reminds us, when you take care of the inside, when you get rid of, you know, the attitudes and saying things maybe you shouldn't say or going places, doing whatever, thinking things you shouldn't. And thinking things, let me just say this really fast, thinking things that you shouldn't is, isn't always lustful thoughts. Sometimes thinking things that you shouldn't is thinking down on yourself. God made you. God created you. God spent so much time to fashion you. You're not an afterthought. As you've heard me say many times before, you are not an afterthought when it comes to creation. You are purposefully created. You are made with intent and you are made with purpose. So when you think about, you know, putting yourself down or insecurities and all those different things, those are the kind of things that we need to focus on when it comes to this inward beauty. But rather saying, God, you made me with a purpose. God, you value me. You love me. You sent your son to shed all of this blood for me. That's how much he loves you, ladies. So your thought processes need to change. So when you do that, when your thought life changes, when you think differently on the inside, when you're, you're in the word of God, when you're in prayer, when you're fasting when it's time to fast, and when you spend time in worship and all of those different things, that's going to change the outside. That's when you then realize, oh, wow, my body is not supposed to be abused. I don't have to be in a relationship where somebody is putting me down and, 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 and uh, belittle, belittling me because they're not in a place you know, whatever, they, they could be sent by Satan. Well, nobody under the sound of my voice because everybody under the sound of my voice is making right choices with your relationships in Jesus' name. But you recognize that the verbal ab abuse and physical abuse and all those different things, they are not acceptable and it's not a part of, part of God's plan. Anyone who tells you, oh, that's part of God's plan, and no, that's Satan. I don't like when people say that, oh, that's a part of, you know, my story and that built me. No, that's a mistake that you may have made in your past out of ignorance and not submitting your life to the Lord. But any man putting his hands on you and, and putting you down and cursing you out is not a part of God's plan. I want to reiterate that. Don't think that your suffering in any kind of relationship is a part of God's plan. It's not. It's Satan trying to strip you and rob you of who you are, who God has called you to be. Instead of you being patient and saying, I'm going to wait on the one that God has sent me. And I can say this confidently because you all, I shared my testimony the last few last times, whenever it was that I was on here. When you're impatient and you step out of that, that's your doing. That's your impatience and that's Satan trying to rob you of something. But when you stay in your position as a woman and saying, I am that good thing. That I am that valuable thing that God has created. That I am designed for purpose. That I am designed for solutions. That I am designed for nurturing and caring. And to use my mouth for confession. That my mouth and my body are supposed to be used for the sanctity of marriage. We have everybody, different age groups that are on here. Your body is to be saved for the use of marriage. And if you've made a mistake in the past and you desire to be married, wait until the ring is on it and then you can enjoy it to the fullest the way God intended and designed. Remember, all of this is a part of God's design. And our endeavor 
coming on here to teach you is that you can understand the original intent of what marriage is for, what womanhood is for, who you are as a woman, no matter what age group you're a part of. I don't care if you've been on this earth for 60 plus years. If you haven't found your identity on the word of God, but it's based on, you know, I, I was about to say Negro spiritual. <laughs> Anyway, I was having this a little moment. But if it's not based on the word of God, then it's wrong. So thank God for these wonderful teachings. Thank God for books that are so anointed that come and allow you to understand who we are as women, who we are, understanding our power and female identity. You know, Proverbs 31 lets us know that we're not weak. In fact, it says that she's strong. We are strong women. But again, we have to put that strength under control, and I know many of you are learning that. But I want us to get a perspective today about the female body. And we're going to be talking more and more about this, that it's not about all of these outward things that a lot of people put an emphasis on. And again, I love, I enjoy nice things. I enjoy shopping. I enjoy the finer things in life. My husband can tell you that, and there's nothing wrong with it. But by the grace of God, I have learned that those things have their place. I am learning that there's things that we're called to do in the kingdom that don't trump my desire for a shirt. There's things that God has called me to do in the kingdom that don't trump my desire for another purse. And when we get that into perspective about our purpose and the plan that God has put us in, then it'll change this, this drive and greed and this covetousness that sometimes happens when we see somebody on Instagram. We see somebody on YouTube. We see somebody in the mall. We see, oh, I want that. I want to have that. But when you put, when I'm reading this, it, it kills all of that. I'm telling you, any, any inkling of, ooh, I want this. Literally, I, I read the word of God. I hear something and boom, it's the fuse just like that. And I'm brought down, okay. Back to back lining up to what God has called me to do back back on focus, you know, back focus, back doing what God is telling me to do, telling me to do. And I know many of you have that same story. Your desire is to please the Lord in every area of your life. And you're going to do it because you are going to make a commitment and you're going to be intentional to do what God is telling you to do based on the word of God and discovering your identity. And not allowing your thoughts to run rampant and not allowing things that you see to feed you and allow your mind and your thoughts to spin out of control. But you're bringing it subjected to the kingdom of, kingdom of God. I love how Pastor John is teaching um, many of us. He said it this morning on prayer, um, which was so powerful. He said, and he, he hasn't even been training us as a staff. He said, you need to have a specific time. And many of you that were on this morning, you shared your time. That consistent time with the Lord, because we keep reiterating and we keep learning that in consistency lies the power. The only way that we're going to discover our purpose as women and our power as women and take our place in the kingdom as God has called us to is that we have to be consistent in the word of God, especially as ladies. Come on, ladies, especially as ladies. We have to bring those thoughts under control. Those, those emotions under control, all of those different things, and we have to be consistent. And when you do, ladies, Pastor John said something so powerful. He said, this is not just an average book. This is not, I love you. I'm just going to read some of these comments. Um, you Are God's Best is an amazing book, Pastor Angel. It is, Ikea. It is. It really is. Um, there's another one that I, I believe I'm going to teach after this one that he did. It's so powerful. Um, mom is saying, help us, Lord. Miss uh, uh, Cheyenne is saying, yes, ma'am. Ashley is saying, amen. Amen. Joy is saying, absolutely. Um, no, I cannot. I can't. She said, no, I can't wait on the right one. Thank you, Jesus. That's right, Joy. Miss Michelle Ford is saying, amen. Miss Mary Buchanan is saying, amen. So that's right. So we have to realize all of these things that when Pastor John said that, he said, this is not just an ordinary book. Remember, Remember, we referred to God in the book. According to the book, it's like a manufacturer with a manual. So God made us. He created us. He knows exactly what needs, what we need, how we're supposed to work. And he laid it out in the Bible. So this is not just any ordinary book, but this book is spiritual, spiritual. So when you read it, something happens spiritually in your bodies, in your minds. You're receiving faith. You're growing. You're maturing. And I know many of you may even have this story. Where you could be studying the Bible and all of a sudden you're talking to someone and boom, scriptures just pop up out of nowhere. 
or you could be praying in your house or to yourself and all of a sudden scriptures are just rolling up to you. You may not know the exact chapter and exact exact verse, but something is happening when you spend time in the word of God. So I'm encouraging you as we close today that your consistency is going to produce the power that God created and intended for you to operate in on this earth. As a mom, as a wife, as a teacher of the word of God, as you're out soul winning, as a grandparent, as a grandmother, as an auntie, as a godmother, as a friend, you can't give people your opinions. You know, there is good to have an opinion, but many times if it's not based on the word of God, you're, you're, going, to, you're going to have the same conversation six months from now. The greatest thing that we can do to offer the people around us is to be a student of the word of God. Be consistent in the word of God. Study the word of God. Find that consistent time where you're studying. Yes, prayer, prayer obviously is important and part of it is prayer, but we have to spend time reading the Bible. And if you need help with that, one thing Pastor John does, um, I know for him he does like, I think 20 chapters or so. For myself, I read maybe, sometimes it's more, but just say on average, Five chapters New Testament, five chapters Old Testament as a reading plan. Right now I'm in the book of Exodus and I'm in the book of Mark. Last week I finished in Colossians, I was in the epistles, um, but I'm still also in Exodus as well. I'm reading those particular books. That's just my particular Bible reading plan. What is your Bible reading plan? Where are you reading in the Bible? What, what is your time in the Bible? I'm telling you ladies, this is what's going to make you as a woman. You know, Pastor John and I were talking yesterday and we were saying a lot of times when it comes to faith and when it comes to the things that we're believing the Lord for, sometimes it doesn't make sense. To the natural mind, it doesn't make sense. Pastor John, Pastor Nidra, how is my reading the Bible consistently every day going to make me into the woman that God has called me to be? I'm telling you, lady, it works. It works, ladies. Take the time to study the word of God. And if you want to take it a step further and find women in the Bible that you're studying. I know um, Shania had mentioned something along those lines. If you want to take time to do that, you can. But just start somewhere. Be consistent in reading. And I'm telling you, all the weights of the world will be broken off of you. All the ideologies of, um, you know, that whole thing that we don't like around here. I am woman, hear me roar. Um, you know, all of those different things. The attitudes, the mindsets, the 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 low self-esteem, the inferiorities, all of those things will be broken off, off of you. If you heard Pastor John even say this morning, who he's a man of God who spends time in the word by the unction of the Holy Ghost, he said, I'm telling a woman, I could be paraphrasing, but that God is your security, that he's comforting you, that he's with you. And I'm probably adding a few words, but that all comes from spending time in the word of God. And I'm sure maybe that might have been somebody's answer to a prayer. God, Comfort me. God, I need security. God, I want to know that you're with me. But that comes from spending time in the word of God. So I encourage you, if you want to walk in this power that God has called you as a woman, that you're tired of trying to figure out who you are as a woman and understanding your female identity, I am encouraging you to spend protected, spend time in the word, guard your time with the word. Very, very important. I'm, I'm going to wrap this up with this one story and I'm going to close it yesterday. As you know, it's our day off. Um, and we saw something on the news that was very interesting. Very interesting. Saw this lady, it was actually on YouTube. Um, she was a YouTuber. And on the outside, you know, you would have assumed that this lady was very put together. Um, she dressed well. They lived in a big, beautiful home. Um, it's, it's fame. I forgot her name. It was Ruby somebody. It's out there publicly. Very beautiful lady. Um, had children. She was doing all these as you know YouTubers do and people do share their story share their life But there was two things that were very interesting and I'm gonna tell you the, the, the end of it I'm, I'm going somewhere with this about the importance of playing your role as a woman My husband kept saying throughout as we we're watching it He kept saying now again this I'm talking about a married couple right now. Everybody's story is different I'm just using this as an example. He kept saying where's her husband? And we were looking for him in the videos and every now and then he would pop up Long story short, in this video, she had about, I think, five children. In this video, she and her husband had some issues. She took it upon herself to tell her husband to leave for an entire year, stay away from the children, don't come home until we can figure this out. Now to the world, that may have seemed like a good thing to do. 
husband leave the home. Let me now take control. Let me now do what I need to do as the woman. You go figure this out because it's not working Working it out. Number one, as a man, you know my husband, Pastor John, who's not, what in the world was he thinking? That's number one. But number two, when she did that, when she took it upon herself to feel like, felt like she knew better, she had things on her own, felt like she was in control, felt like she could, she could work things out, I can raise these kids on my own, you go leave for an entire year, stay away from me and the children because we need to work things out. Do you know, as a result, she left herself open, this other woman comes into her life who's supposed to be this counselor, guru, whatever. Long story short, they ended up, she ended up adopting this woman's philosophies where the men would come into these counseling groups and they would belittle the men, tell them they're worthless, tell them, you know, basically, um, I, I forgot the word, but like dehumanizing them as men, making them feel weak, making them feel worthless, and all this empowerment as a woman. She was even doing like this, this little women's group and she was doing this dance. Long story short, it, came, it leaned over to the point where this lady seemed like she had everything together, all of these different things because she subjected herself and opened herself up, I believe, to demonic activity. She ends up um, abusing her children um, uh, mentally and physically where she starved her children. She wrapped them up in saran wrap. Um, they were malnourished, all these different things. She starved her children out of punishing them. She punished her two youngest children. And I'm, I'm giving you the story bits and pieces. But what stuck out to me the most is the fact that this lady, and my husband kept saying it over and over again, he said, where is her husband in this? Why? And I'm thinking, and I never said this to my husband out loud, but I'm thinking, why is she allowing this woman, number one, to be so connected? I said, where is her husband? Why is she giving this woman advice? Where is she coming from? Like, these are all these things that are going on in my mind. And the reality was it led her down this dark trail where now she got like four counts, 15 years for neglect and abuse and all these different things. And again, I'm giving you the story in parts, but this is what happens when people as women rather don't know who they are. Obviously the man didn't, he didn't play his role, but I'm on here a moment with the ladies talking to you. That is so important in the world's eyes. She looked like a beautiful woman, five kids, beautiful house, blogging she had all these followers looked like she was living a life but reality was on the inside none of that was subjected to, to to the kingdom none of it was subjected to god's purpose none of it was subjected subjected to her purpose and power as god ordained but rather it was subjected to this woman that she allowed to come in and influence her advise her all get the man out of the way you know all those different things dehumanizing the man which we see happen all the time, where it led, I believe it led that woman crazy, where she ends up starving her children, wrapping her children in saran wrap, and they end up malnourished, the police come, arrest her, children have to end up in foster care, now the husband is filing for divorce, he's trying to get the, the, the children back into custody. All of this happened because a woman didn't know who she was in Christ. All because this woman didn't know who her, what her purpose was what her identity was. She was misled, she was misguided, but that is not gonna be our story in the name of Jesus Christ. We are gonna be so connected to what God is doing here uh, in the Living Water Church and ultimately all across the world. We're understanding our purpose of who we are as women. Yes, it may be challenging, but we are going to embrace it. We're going to tell our flesh, and I have my hands and feet up on this, to shut up because we are going to listen to what the Bible is telling us not our minds, not our thought processes, not what appears good, but what the Bible says. In that story, that lady, Satan robbed her of something, but that will not be your story in the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to buckle down. You're going to be consistent in the word of God, and you are going to obey exactly what God is going is telling you to do, and you're going to soar high. You're going to fly high, and you are going to excel according to God's standards and not anybody else's standards in Jesus' name name if you agree with that and you know that's you just type amen you can shout amen something say that's me i am connected i'm growing and learning in jesus name miss karen is saying amen patria is saying in the name of jesus yes yes i receive it uh ikea is saying amen cheyenne is saying amen They're, they were coming up miss about where is your power in god miss barbara uh torn said that 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. I believe that's Miss Mary's sister. Uh, yes, ma'am, that is so true. It's like the Holy Spirit puts the right scripture in your heart when you need it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's right. She's uh, Joy saying, I like Deborah. She was a warrior and a judge. That's right. That's powerful, Joy. Oh, my goodness. I know. Isn't that sad? What took place? Uh, praise God. Listen to what the word of God says. Amen. I receive it. And Miss Michelle Ford is saying, amen. Cheyenne saying, I receive. Miss Carolyn, amen. That's me. Yes, yes, amen. Ladies, love you so much. This has been so amazing. We are on a journey. It, and it's so much that I'm learning. So many things the Holy Spirit is revealing to me personally. Hallelujah. Um, about my identity and my purpose and the things that I need to, to, to even make adjustments with, with certain mindsets. But thank God for his word. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. And I know that many of you all have the same testimony. Do me a favor as you're popping on today, make sure that you like it, make sure that you love it, share it, get the word out. Um, and then before you go, love you too, Cheyenne, so much. Love you all so very much. Thank you for being connected. Um, make sure that you give today. I want to give you an opportunity to give. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse number 1. I believe I shared this before. The Bible actually says at the end of this, it says, it is wicked and evil to give mindless offerings. It is wicked and evil, it goes on to say earlier, to enter into the temple and give wicked and mindless offerings. So what does that simply mean? That means that instead of me tipping God and say, oh, well, let me just give five. Oh, they're asking for an offering. Let me, I'm not asking you personally to give me anything. I'm saying to you, ask the Holy Ghost what he would have you to do to see his kingdom advance with the wealth that he has given you. What ha has he given you? Is he challenging you to do something that may ruffle your feathers may make you feel uncomfortable but there's such a great reward on the other side god is so faithful he watches over his word to perform it and he is going to bless you as you are obedient to what he's telling you to do in the name of jesus there are so many things that we're doing right now we have literally this week is crunch time with our staff and our team um we have meetings starting tonight probably all the way through up until sunday for easter as we plan um, and strategize it's going to be an amazing sunday so many souls are going to be coming out and get saved we're getting candy bags for the children we're giving away gas cards we're doing um just to be a blessing to the community so you can get a part of that outreach um also as you know we're uh, planning a crusade in mexico and then don't forget we have our daily operations we have a staff that we pay we have um, the, the building um, that we pay for, we rent vans on Sunday. Now we just added two more vans because we're bringing in more children. Chalk is doing an amazing, amazing job with the children, um, bringing in all these children. This is all souls and your finances are being used to advance the kingdom of God. So take a moment, ask the Lord, say, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? How can I help be a part of this great move of God? And I'm telling you, ladies, whatever he's telling you to do, be obedient and know that God is going to reward you mightily in Jesus' name. Um, and I believe that's it. The giving links. Um, Alexis, I believe you're on here. Somebody, Ashley, if you know the links, I appreciate you too. Um, Patria, all these ladies that are on here, great woman of God, keep up the good. Thank you so much, Miss Barbara. I appreciate that. It's all Jesus and we give him all the praise. Um, so again, those that are on here, can you do me a favor? Mommy, anybody, if you know the links, please put the links up so everybody can see them. And then those that are on YouTube, Joy, different ones, let's put the links up. But I'll also tell you as well, we have Cash App, which is the dollar sign, the Living Water Church. Cash App is dollar sign, the Living Water Church. We have Venmo, which is at the LWC. Venmo is the at sign, the LWC. We have PayPal, which is at the Living Water Church. At the Living Water Church is PayPal. We have text to give, and that number for text to give is 202-918-4880. Again, that number is 202-918-4880. That's the way that you can give there. And then finally, we have Zelle, which is the LWC.VA at gmail.com. All of the ways that you can give today. Just a few more reminders as you are giving today. Um, thank you, Adrian, for popping on, giving those links. I appreciate that. Um, 5 a.m. prayer tomorrow morning going to be another glorious time in the presence of God. So I encourage you to be a part of that 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Pastor John is back on at 10 a.m. for discipleship class. And I'll be back on at 1 p.m. tomorrow for another moment with the ladies. And then tomorrow night is Kingdom Hour, Kingdom News at 7.30 p.m. It's our midweek service. So make sure that you are a part of that um, 7.30 p.m. 
Um, and then, of course, we continue on the schedule. Friday night is prayer night at 7.30. Saturday, uh, we go out in the community and win souls to Jesus. Um, Saturday at 12 p.m. And then Sunday is Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. We're going to be celebrating the fact that he rose and he uh, is alive and we are living for him. So that is this Sunday at um, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. this Sunday at our new location. 9 a.m. is our Sunday morning service. Make sure you bring your family and your friends this Sunday. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. And then mark your calendars on Saturday, April the 6th, April the 6th, Saturday, April the 6th at the Barnes and Nobles, the bookstore in Bowie Town Center, right there in Bowie, Maryland, Bowie Town Center. Pastor John and I will be there at 12 p.m. We're doing our book signing for our marriage book. So we're looking for at least 30 people to come out and support um, and be a part of that. Um, so definitely, 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 uh, we look forward to having you be a part of that in Jesus' name. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Thank you for just what we're learning, Father, and that we're discovering our purpose and our power of who we are as women, that we're understanding our female identity, that you've created us with such intent, and that we're going to use our bodies for kingdom service. Now, God, I lift up those who are giving today and lift up this offering before you, God. I thank you that you said in your word, <coughs> excuse me, Father, that when we lend unto the poor, we're lending unto you and you will repay. God, you were so faithful. You were so good and we love you so much. We thank you for this opportunity. May, opportunity. May every person be blessed. <coughs> May they increase financially in every area of their life. We love you so much and we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, as we always say, and as I get a drink of water, shout amen. Let the world know that Jesus is alive. Shout amen, scream amen, because he is so good and so faithful. Ladies, I love you so much. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow afternoon <laughs> at 1 p.m., a moment with the ladies. Don't forget 5 a.m. prayer, 10 a.m. discipleship, and 1 p.m., a moment with the ladies. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Remember, use your body for the purpose it was designed for. Whatever God is asking you to do, to do, to do today, do it with such gladness such excitement knowing that he is going to reward you mightily. Remember, your past is over, today is new, and God loves you so much and he values you so much and he expects something great out of your life. And I believe it's going to be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful day, ladies. See you tomorrow. Bye. Love you, love you, love you.